you know, and, and she's going to talk about, she's going to speak about Grodin's uh, period conjecture and one motifs. Thank you. So thank, uh, first of all, thank for the invitation. I will speak about uh, Grotendieck period conjecture and one motif. So I start recalling the Chandler conjecture. So Chandler conjecture that if we have n complex number x1, xn, uh, which are q linearly independent, then at least n of the number x1, xn, e to the x1, e to the xn are algebraically independent over q bar. Uh, this is a very difficult conjecture. And until now, we have only two uh, known cases, uh, the lindemann weierstrass theorem. Uh, we say that if x1, xn are algebraic, uh, and the Q linearly independent over Q, then e to the X1 and e to the Xn are algebraically independent over Q bar. And the second case is the hermit lindemann uh, theorem, which is the Chanoel case for N equal to one. These are the only known case about uh, this uh, very uh, powerful uh, conjecture. Uh, we can look what happens if uh, instead of the exponential uh, function, we use uh, elliptic curve? So I recall that the exponential function is the exponential map for the multiplicative group. So uh, we go from the Lie group of GM to uh, C star, and we send Z to E to the, Z, e to the Z. And the, what's happening in the what's happening in uh, elliptic context? So uh, we can use the Weierstrass function uh, in order to um, embed the elliptic curve in P two. So we go from the Lie group of uh, the elliptic curve into uh, P two of C, sending Z in one P of Z P prime of Z. Now with this notation, we can write an analog, uh, an elliptic analog of the lindemann uh, weierstrass theorem, which involved the Weierstrass function instead of the exponential. So uh, Philippon and Vustols prove that if we have uh, uh, alpha one, alpha n algebraic number linearly independent over the field of complex multiplication of the elliptic curve, then the number p alpha 1, p alpha n are algebraically independent over q bar. So instead of the exponential, we use the Weierstrass function. And instead of the uh, linear independence over q, we have the linear independence over the field of multiplication of the elliptic curve. We can also uh, look to the elliptic uh, Chanoel conjecture. So if we assume an elliptic curve defined over Q bar, and we take uh, n complex number, which are linearly independent over the field of complex multiplication, then the transcendence degree over Q bar of the field over Q bar generated by X1, Xn, P x1, P x10 is bigger or equal to n. So here again, instead of the exponential map, we use the Weierstrass P function. So uh, all the conjecture that we have seen until now uh, are related to a very important conjecture proposed by uh, Grotendieck. So uh, Grotendieck start with a g-dimensional uh, abelian variety. And uh, he observed that the integration of uh, differential form give a, uh, an isomorphism between the first Theram cohomology group of the abelian variety and the first Betty uh, cohomology group of the abelian variety. And uh, we choose a basis of these two vector space and the matrix which represents this isomorphism is called the period matrix of the abelian parity. And the entry, 
which are just the integration of differential form along some path, are uh, the two old pieces of the abelian variety. And uh, Grothendieck proposed the following conjecture. He said that any polynomial relation uh, with rational coefficient between the period of A should have a geometrical origin. Uh, more precisely, any algebraic cycle on A or on the power of A uh, will give rise to polynomial relation with rational coefficient among the periods of A. Uh, Grothendieck uh, just uh, writes down this conjecture like this in a footnote of uh, one of his paper, but uh, he never write down this conjecture in a very explicit way. He just say that uh, uh, polynomial relation between a period should have a geometrical origin. Who wrote down this conjecture uh, was uh, is uh, Yves André. Uh, we who wrote down a more explicit conjecture. Uh, um, using uh, the notion of a motivic Galois group, uh, whose uh, dimension is uh, strictly related with the existence of algebraic cycle. So Yves André proposed the following conjecture. If x is a smooth project value over x, defined over q bar, then uh, the transcendence degree over q bar of the field generated over q bar by the period of x is the dimension of this motivic Galois group of x. So um, I will not give now the definition of this motivic Galois group. We will see some example, but uh, in the case of uh, abelian variety, uh, the motivic Galois group is exactly the same thing as the Montfortet group. So if you know what is the Montfortet group, uh, it's fine. But uh, later in this talk, we will see some example of this um, uh, motivic Galois group. But the, what is important is that the, this dimension is related to the existence of uh, algebraic cycle. More algebraic cycle do you, you have, uh, less is uh, its dimension because in, it's, it's, we can say that this motivic Galois group has to fix all the algebraic cycles. So if you have a lot of algebraic cycle, uh, the dimension uh, decrease and so also the dimension of uh, this field of uh, generated by periods. So I want now to, to, to look what are exactly the periods. So I recall something about differential form. Uh, differential form of first kind, it is, a, it is a form which is holomorphic everywhere. A differential form of second kind, uh, it has a zero, uh, it has residue zero at any pole. And uh, the differential form of third kind are all the, the differential form. And it is clear that the first kind are included in the second kind, which are contained in the third kind. So in the case of an elliptic curve, uh, so we take an elliptic curve with uh, various rest coordinate function x and y and uh, with its lattice. I recall that we, we have the various rest p function that we have already used in order to embed the elliptic curve in the projective space. And uh, this various rest p function is of this kind. Uh, it is a meromorphic function on C having a double pole with residue zero at each point of the lattice. Then we have the sigma function, which is a holomorphic function in the whole C. And then we have the zeta function, uh, which is a meromorphic function on C with a simple pole at each point of the lattice and no other pole. We will use these three functions, the virus trust P function and the sigma function and the zeta function in order to um, define differential form on the elliptic curve. And then 
uh, we integrate this differential form and we get periods. So on an elliptic curve, we have the differential form of first kind, omega, the x over y, whose pullback via the exponential map is just dz. This is a well-known differential form. Then we have the differential form of second kind, eta, which is x dx over y. It has a double pole with residue zero at each point of the lattice. And the pullback via the exponential uh, map of the elliptic curve is just the virus stress function. Differential form of first kind and second kind are well known. In the literature, they are of very use. What is uh, quite new is the differential form of third kind. And uh, this differential form of third kind are parameterized by point of the dual elliptic curve. And uh, so we have uh, C of Q, it is one and a half. Uh, y minus y of q over x minus x of q, the x over y. Uh, if q is the elliptic uh, logarithm of the point uh, big Q, we have that the pullback via the exponential map of this uh, differential form of third kind is uh, the different the logarithm the differential logarithm of uh, cell function f q z. Uh, cell, func cell function is uh, fqz sigma uh, z plus q over sigma z sigma q multiplied by the exponential of minus theta q z. So you see that um, in order to define the differential of first, second, and third kind, we use the Weierstrass function, the sigma function, and the theta function. These uh, different are related with period in the following way. So we choose uh, loops, uh, the basic uh, loop of an elliptic curve. So the elliptic uh, integral of first kind, this is the integration of the differential form of first kind along gamma one and gamma two, are the period of the Weierstrass P function. This means that the P of Z plus omega uh, one is equal of P of Z. This is a very well-known result. The elliptic integral uh, of uh, second kind, this is the integral of the differential form of second kind along the two loops, gamma one, gamma two, are the quasi-period of the Weierstrass uh, zeta function. This means that uh, theta of z plus omega i is theta of z plus eta i. For the uh, integral of third kind, uh, things are quite different because we have now that the exponential of the elliptic integral of the third kind these are eta one q minus omega one theta q and eta two q minus omega two theta q. So the exponential of the elliptic integral of the third kind are the quasi quasi period of a cell function. That is that uh, f q evaluated in z plus omega i is equal to f q z. Uh, multiply by the exponential of eta i q minus omega i theta q. So in the first two cases, the elliptic integral first and second kind are the period. In the third case, you have to take the exponential. Now, um, we have explained the period uh, for uh, elliptic curve. Now I have I want to introduce one motive, which are kind of generalization of abelian variety, and also yeah. in particular. Christiana, sorry for interrupting. In the third case, without taking the exponential, wouldn't these be like the periods of the punct some like punctured elliptic curve uh, with respect to the third 
like uh, with the respect to the differential of the third kind or yes uh, if you don't take the exponential uh, they appear as the period of uh, semi abelian variety i see yes uh, you will see this in uh, two or three slides okay okay thank you i <laughs> have to wait sorry so um, <laughs> So yes, and I want to 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 so remember that uh, the, the the differential of third kind are parameterized by point in the dual of the elliptic curve, and we will see that uh, the point of the dual of an elliptic curve are parameterized in fact extension of uh, elliptic curve by GM. So this is important to remember that these uh, differential form of third kind are parameterized by point on the dual elliptic curve. Now, uh, I want to play one motif. So uh, one motif, uh, you can see as a length one complex uh, of a group scheme in the following way. Um, G that you see in degree zero is an extension of, of an abelian variety by a torus. Uh, in this case, for this uh, talk, I state the torus uh, split, so it is GMS. So such extension uh, are parameterized by a rational point Q1, QS of the dual abelian variety A star, since A star is isomorphic to X1 of A by GM. So if you have a Q1 parameterized an extension an extension of G uh, of A by GM. If you take Q1 QS, you have an extension of A by GMS. Uh, this X1 is uh, additive in uh, both variables. We call uh, such kind uh, of extension semi abelian variety. So um, it is important that these semi abelian variety are parameterized by point in the dual uh, abelian parity. And we have seen that uh, this point Q1, QS parameterized differential form of third kind. So then we take uh, semi-abelian variety and then we take uh, point in this uh, semi-abelian variety. We take R1, Rn living in G. And since, that, uh, since G lives above A, we have that this point R1, Rn leaves above point P1, Pn of A via this uh, projection pi. So now we have recall that differential of third kind, CQ, uh, involve point Q. And so they are really uh, strictly related to extension of Abelian variety by Tori. This is why the integration of this differential form are related to period of the, the semi-abelian variety. We will see it now. So I have to, in order to construct pe uh, the period matrix, in order to have period, I have to choose differential form and I, I have to integrate this differential uh, form along some path. In the case of uh, one motif, so I have G which is parameterized by Q1, US, and then I have point Ri living above Pi. So uh, I take uh, differential form of first, ki first kind on A, eta one, uh, omega one, omega G. I take differential forms of second kind on A, eta one, eta G. This is a very classical. But then I take differential uh, form on G which induces the invariant differential form on the corresponding factor GMS. And this differential form of third kind, it is construct from the pullback of the differential form on a CQK that we have uh, construct uh, using the SER function. Then we take uh, the classical uh, loops on the abelian variety, gamma one, gamma two G, and we lift this loop uh, on the semi-abelian variety G because I recall that G lives above A. 
Then I take a basis of the homology of the torus. Uh, until now, I have a closed uh, path. And then uh, I have uh, an open path on G from the origin of G to the uh, to each point uh, Ri. So uh, with uh, this uh, basis, I add the period matrix uh, becomes uh, like this. In the case of an abelian variety, it's just the integration of omega i along the gamma j and the integration of the eta i along the gamma j. This is a very classical result. In the case of the semi-abelian variety, I have uh, the period of A, 2 pi R, which are the period of the torus. And uh, then I have the integration of this uh, differential form of third kind along the, the gamma uh, J tilde, which, which, which leaves the gamma J. And this uh, integration here, I didn't write it explicitly, but uh, are exactly this one. Uh, this uh, eta iq minus omega ixq. We will see it explicitly after in the case of elliptic curve. Here we use a BN variety, so it's a little bit uh, complicated. But uh, in the case of elliptic curve, we will see now it's uh, more explicit. In the case of uh, the whole period, the whole one motif, I have the, the matrix period of J, that is the period matrix of the abelian variety 2 pi i plus this uh, integral. And I have to add the generalized semi abelian logarithm evaluated at each point Ri. Uh, this uh, generalized semi abelian logarithm uh, of a point Ri are just the integration from zero to pi i of all the differential form of first kind. I recall that pi lives above ri. And uh, this uh, 2g uh, integration are on the abelian variety a. Then I have to integrate the differential form of third kind from zero to ri. And I have uh, s of this uh, differential form because I have an extension of A by G and S. So we see that uh, the field generated by period of A is contained in the field generated by the period of G and it is contained in the field generated by the period of M. Each time I have to add something. In the case of elliptic curve, everything is uh, more easy. So I take one motif uh, where G is the extension of an elliptic curve by GM parameterized by just a point Q. Then I take a point R, uh, leaving in G, and uh, leaving above a point P of the elliptic curve. So in this case, the period matrix of M is like this. So we have omega 1, eta 1, omega 2, uh, eta, uh, eta 2, which are the period of A, of the elliptic curve E. Then we have 2 pi i, which is the period of the torus GM. Then we have uh, eta 1 q minus omega 1 uh, theta q and eta 2 q minus omega 2 uh, theta q, which are the the integration of the differential form of third kind parameterized by Q along the two map, uh, the two path of the elliptic curve, uh, gamma one, gamma two. And then in the first line here, P, theta P, log F Q P plus L prime. So a small P is a logarithm of the point big P. This first line is uh, um, generalized semi abelian logarithm uh, evaluated in the point R. So this is uh, P, theta P, logarithm of the cell function evaluated in QP plus uh, an element of K. So this is uh, uh, the object, the entries of this matrix are the period of the one motif M. So in the case of elliptic curve, everything becomes uh, more explicit. 
the first who compute this uh, matrix was uh, Daniel Bertrand. Then uh, we start with the uh, Chanois period conjecture, which involve uh, 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 the symbol uh, bigger or equal. And uh, in the Grotten period conjecture, if you, you remember, we have an equality. A uh, Chanois conjecture is a less precise statement that the, the conjecture of period of uh, Grothendieck because uh, it gives you just a lower bound. So uh, you can get the Chanuel conjecture from the classical uh, period conjecture of Grothendieck. So for, to avoid this problem, Yvonne Hay proposed the following generalization of Grothendieck period conjecture. He said that uh, if you take a pure or Mix motive for us, mix motive are one motive. Uh, if you take one motive defined over a subfield uh, K of C, then the transcendence degree over K of the field generated by the periods of M over K is bigger or equal to the dimension of the motive Galois group of M. So now the, the generation are uh, twice. Uh, you have that the field um, where the geometrical object, where the motive is defined, is no longer the algebraic closure of uh, Q, but it is uh, just any subfield of C. And the, the other generalization is that here you have a bigger and equal instead of equality because you work over any subfield K of C. If you go back to the classic to the first period conjecture, you have an equality and the smooth parity was defined over Q bar. So this is, if you work over Q bar, we have equal, equality. If you take a field which is not algebraically closed, you have a bigger or equal. This is the difference between the, these two conjectures. The, and this conjecture, this generalized Grotten period conjecture, contain uh, Chanuel conjecture, the elliptic Chanuel conjecture, and uh, so the lindemann weierstrass theorem and the other theorem that we have seen. So we have really to use this uh, generalization. Now we have seen what are periods, which kind of object they are. I want to, to speak about a little bit about the motivic Galois group. So if we take a one motive, so I recall that G, um, G is an extension of an abelian variety by a torus parameterized by the point Q1, Qs. Then we fix point Ri, which uh, above the point Pi. So uh, the motivic Galois group is an algebraic group and so has like uh, every uh, algebraic group, uh, you can, uh, it sits in the following short exact sequence. Uh, it is an extension of uh, reductive uh, part and the unipotent radical. So we have that the motivic Galois group of M is an extension of the motivic Galois group of A which is the largest reductive quotient of the motivic Galois group of M. And the kernel of this arrow is the unipotent radical. And so in particular, the dimension of the motivic Galois group of M is the dimension of the motivic Galois group of A plus the dimension of this unipotent radical. I know the dimension of the motivic Galois group of A only in the case of elliptic curve and uh, of product of elliptic curve. This part is really very uh, difficult if, to compute uh, if you work with uh, arbitrary abelian variety. Uh, we can say something about this uh, unipotent radical uh, of our uh, one motive using the point uh, Ri, Pi, and Qi. And we will see now 
the dimension of this uh, unipotent radical. So um, I take the point P1, Pn on An. Then I have the point Q1, Qs in uh, A star S. And I consider the smallest abelian subgroup of An cross A star S containing the point PQ, modulo isogeny. I always work modulo isogeny. Then I take BQ, which is the intersection of uh, B with AN cross Q1, QS. Uh, this is essentially the, the fiber in AN of B above Q. And uh, this obviously uh, BQ contains P. So until now, I have just used the point PI and QI. Now I have to involve also the point Ri leaving above the, the point PI. So I consider n copy of the extension G. So Gn is an extension of An above the torus Gm and S. And I consider the pullback of this extension above BQ because BQ is contained in An. And then I consider, and I get the torsor A prime above BQ. And then I consider Z, which is the smallest subtorus of G, M, and S, such that uh, the point R is contained in this uh, push down of A prime. A prime is the push down uh, of um, A, sorry, A is the push down of A prime. Uh, via the map from GMNS to Z. So this torsor E, uh, this Z torsor E above BQ is essentially the smallest torsor uh, constructed from GN uh, containing the point R1, Rn. And uh, the, now we, with all this construction, we can, uh, give the dimension of the unipotent radical of M. So the dimension of the unipotent radical is two dimension of B. B is the subabelian variety containing the point PI and QJ, plus the dimension of Z. Z was uh, by construction, the smaller subtotal so that uh, the torso that you get from pull back and push down from GN contain the point R1, Rn. It is the smallest torso containing uh, all this point. Now, in a very in the case without a billion variety, uh, things are uh, more easy. So I take the one motif without a billion variety. This means I have a narrow from Z to the torus. And uh, I have to fix a S point in this torus. And this is uh, what we call a one motif without a billion part. And in this case, the dimension of the motivigara group is the dimension of the motivigara group of the torus, which is just one, plus the dimension of uh, this Z here, which is equal to the dimension of the Q sub vector space of C modulo uh, 2 pi i generated by the logarithm of the point Q1 QS, which gives the arrow group. So, in this case, the computation of uh, the dimension of the Motivi Gara group is uh, really very uh, easy. And it involves uh, the logarithm of the, the point Q1 QS. Now, I want to show you how uh, we get uh, the, the, con the relation between the Chanel conjecture and the generalized period conjecture. In fact, we have that Chanel conjecture uh, coincide with the generalized period conjecture applied to one motif without a billion part. Uh, you can apply Grothendieck conjecture and its generalization to any ge geometrical object. Uh, 
uh, I apply in this case the uh, generalized Gaussian conjecture to this uh, particular kind of uh, one mapping. I want to show now how uh, Grotendieck implies Shanwen. So I have to prove Shanwen. I start with uh, uh, n uh, complex points which are Q linearly independent. I have to construct one motif uh, to which I can apply Grotendieck. So I choose uh, Q1 is equal e to the x1 and Qn is e to the xn. And then I construct the field K uh, adding the point Q1, Qn to uh, Q. And then I consider the one motif defined over K uh, in the, this way. Uh, I define the arrow from Z to GMN, sending one in uh, the point Q1, Qn, uh, living in GMN. Now, in this case, the matrix, the period matrix of M is just uh, uh, one, the logarithm of the QI and two pi i. I have two pi i uh, uh, cross the identity matrix and cross n because I uh, work with uh, GMN. Now, if uh, uh, two pi i is, uh, in fact, doesn't belong to the vector space generated by the QI, uh, we suppose that uh, two pi i is none of the point uh, x1xn, then since uh, x1xn are q linearly independent, the dimension of the q sub vector space uh, of uh, c modulo 2 pi i generated by uh, this uh, logarithm, uh, the log of the qi, which are log of qi are just the xi, is uh, n. So I apply uh, the generalized Grotting period conjecture, I have that the transcendence degree over Q of the field over Q generated by 2 pi i xi e to the xi. This is uh, by the definition of the QI, the transcendence degree over Q of the field generated over Q by uh, 2 pi i, the log of the QI and the QI. So this is exactly the transcendence degree of the field generated over Q by the period of M, because the period of M are just two pi i and the log of the QI, and the K is just the field generated over Q by Q1, Qn. So these equality are clear. And now this uh, transcendence degree is uh, bigger or equal to the dimension of the Motivigalois group. In, and in our case, this is one plus the dimension of uh, this uh, Q vector space generated by the log QI. And so this is one plus N. So now you just have to, to delete two pi I and to delete one, and you get that the transcendence degree of the field generated over Q by XI e to the XI is bigger or equal to N. And this is exactly the Shanwell conjecture since x1, xn are complex number Q linearly independent. If uh, 2 pi i uh, is one of the xi, so we suppose it is equal to xn, we just have to say q1 is equal to a to the x1, qn minus 1 is equal a to the xn minus 1. And then we construct uh, the following one motif, Z uh, an arrow from Z to G M N minus one. Uh, this arrow send one in Q1, Q N minus one. You have to work with uh, uh, N minus one point because you have that two pi i uh, will already appear as period because it is the period uh, associated to the torus. This is why you have to not to consider this um, uh, this point. And then you proceed in the same way. So we have shown that uh, we can prove Shanwell. Um, we, we do the, the other way. We have to prove Grotendieck using Shanwell. So I take uh, one motif without a billion part. This means I have to fix point 
in the torus GMS. So these points are QI1, QIS, for uh, I going from one to N. And uh, we can assume that, um, we can assume that uh, uh, the field K is the, the field generated by uh, over Q by the QIJ. So we know that the matrix period of M is uh, this matrix here. We have the identity N cross N, two pi I by the identity of S cross S. And then we have all the log of the point QIJ, which defined uh, the one. So uh, if we fix uh, uh, D, the dimension of the Q sub vector space generated by all this period, this means by uh, 2 pi i and the log QIJ, and we let x1, xd be a basis of this uh, Q vector space. So x1, xd will be Q linearly independent. And what we do is that we apply channel to this uh, Q linearly complex number X1, XT. So the transcendence degree of uh, the field generated over K by the period of M. So I remember that K is uh, the field generated by the QIJ. So I get the transcendence degree over Q of the field generated over Q by the two pi I uh, the log of QEJ and uh, QEJ. Uh, 2 pi i and the log QEJ are the period. And this is equal to the transcendence degree over Q of the field generated by the XI and A to the XI because the XI are a basis. And this is bigger or equal to D by a Chanwell conjecture. D is exactly one plus the dimension of the log because I have one plus dimension of the log because the two pi, I have the two pi i in the, this uh, Q vector space. And the log was uh, the sub vector space generated by the log QIJ in C modulo two pi i. So this one stay for the two pi i. And this is exactly the dimension of the multi group of M. So we have seen that really Chanwell conjecture is equivalent to uh, the generalized Grotten conjecture applied to one motif without uh, abelian part. I want to, to uh, finish uh, this talk showing another result uh, that we gave. Uh, with uh, Patrice Philippon and uh, Biswati Sa and Ekata Sa. So uh, first I have to recall the definition. Two extension F1, F2 over field F are said to be algebraically independent or free over F if and only if any finite set of element of F1 she is algebraically independent over F, remains so also over F2. This uh, definition doesn't seem very symmetric, but in fact, it is uh, symmetric. We can, you can change uh, F2 with uh, F1. So uh, we take a semi abelian variety defined over a, a Q bar. We have uh, its uh, period matrix omega G, and we define to a tower of algebraic closed field, setting E0 is the algebraic closure of Q, and L0 is the algebraic closure of the field generated over Q by the period of G. Then the other fields are defined recursively. E1 is the algebraic closure uh, of the field generated over Q by the component of the exponential map of the G and e n minus one uh, rational point of the real algebra of G. And Ln is the algebraic closure of the field generated over Q by the period of G and the component of the generalized logarithm applied to uh, Ln minus one uh, rational point of G. In, uh, E n are essentially the component of the exponential 
and LN are the component of the generalized model. With uh, Philippon and uh, Toussaint, we proved that uh, if we set E the union of the whole AN and L the union of uh, the whole AN, then if we assume the generalized grotting failure conjecture, then these two fields, E and L, are algebraically independent over Q bar. This means that any finite set of element of E, for example, which is algebraic independent over Q bar, remains so also over L. Um, this uh, theorem is very nice, but it has a really very strong hypothesis because you, we use the generalized grotting period conjecture, which is a very um, difficult conjecture. And uh, in the last year, no big progress uh, were done in the proof of this uh, conjecture, unfortunately. So uh, the talk is finished. I thanks a lot for the invitation. And if you have any question. Thanks, Christiana. So uh, let's thank Christiana first and then. Uh, thank you. Uh, uh, any questions, anyone? You can either uh, write the questions in the chat box or you can just actually unmute yourself. Yes. And, uh, There's nothing there yet. So this last, uh, that, this last theorem that, uh, that you mentioned, so uh, you, it's assuming uh, the generalized Gordon conjecture for one motifs. Yes. Uh -huh. So you don't need to. Uh uh, uh, I can apply a generalized period conjecture just to one motif because the, the very difficult part is the, the computation of the dimension of the motivic Galois group of uh, one motif. You can apply the, the generalized period conjecture to, to any geometrical object. The period are normally very easy to compute. Uh, but uh, this part, the dimension is very, very hard. Uh, it's a very hard object. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This is the difficult part to say. Yeah, and the unipotent part is much more accessible than the actual, uh, the, the reductive in the, part. In the case of one motif, yes. In the case of one motif, because uh, I'm not an expert, but uh, the dimension also, the dimension of the moon portage group of an arbitrary abelian variety is very, very difficult. It's not uh, easy. I know this dimension in the case of uh, a product of elliptic curve, for example, or for very special kind of abelian variety, but in general, it's very, very difficult. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, anyone has any other questions? Uh... So maybe I'll ask one more question and then that will give uh, people more time to maybe think of questions. Yeah. Yeah. Can you see the last theorem again, the statement, uh, the, the last slide? This one. Yes, yes. So here, I see. So I'm having a hard time sort of like uh, getting an intuition about the, the this like towers, the ENs and the LNs. Uh, the EN are really constructed uh, using the, um, in fact, this is a generalization of um, a theorem where instead of G, uh, we have the, the torus. So in this case, you have a tower involving the, the, the value of the exponential uh, of E to the, uh, e, the exponential function evaluated in uh, some point and the uh, LN, oh, sorry. Uh, and ln is just a tower involving the logarithm of uh, logarithm of logarithm. It's the tower of logarithm function. Yes. And the other is tower of exponential. You have e to the z, e to the e to the z. In the case of uh, tori, it's more um, visible. It's just uh, really a tower. You, you evaluate the exponential in, in itself. 
several times. And the logarithm, you evaluate the logarithm in itself. Is there any, so I'm, I'm, I'm looking at this, so, the, uh, so there's G, the semi-abelian variety. So in the picture just by itself, there's no, uh, there's no one motive actually. There's no like one motive that has a non-trivial uh, abelian group, non-trivial uh, Z module. So how do you get the, how do you make the link actually? Uh, ah, uh, here in this uh, case. Uh, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, here, uh, this, uh, so uh, first of all, uh, semi-abelian variety are, uh, are uh, one motive. No, I understand, but I mean, there's no, there's no Z module, right? The, 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 uh, the, the case, zero portion is, uh, is zero there. Ah, uh, because uh, you don't see here, but mm -hmm. uh, you have to construct, um, So you, you start in any case with uh, um, um, uh, I have uh, just a moment. I have to look. <laughs> To the definition, we wrote this paper several years ago. Um, oh, actually, Christiana, I mean, uh, it, it, you can also probably uh, find the paper. I, uh, sorry. No, no, I, it's no, no. I remember. Uh, in uh, in order to to prove that uh, these two uh, fields are um, algebraically independent, uh, you just have to, to 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 you proceed by induction. You choose um, the smallest n such that e n and l n are in fact uh, are not algebraically independent. So you have to, to show the contradiction. So you choose some point in l n which are uh, algebraic over e n. Because to say that these two fields are algebraically independent. This means that for each n, they are algebraic independent. So if you want to, to get an absurd, you start saying, we choose uh, n0 such that e n0 and l n0 uh, are not algebraically independent. So we choose some point in l, uh, l n0, which are algebraic over uh, e n0. And with this, Point, you construct uh, the one motif. I see. I see. And then you get a contradiction, an absurd. I see. I see. Interesting. Interesting. Uh, anyone else has any questions? Uh, okay, so if not, a uh, very nice talk, uh, Christiana. Thank you so much for accepting our invitation, giving the talk. Uh, thank you. Uh, and uh, we'll thank Christiana again. <laughs>